I really enjoy uh, listening to this creation story. We know that there are two creation stories in our scriptures, and this one in particular. I enjoy because, to me, it shows God's careful attention as, he's, as he goes through the days and God forms all these creatures and all these different parts of the earth. And, and God's great detail and, and just care in every little facet of the creation. And especially as it goes to the sixth day and God says, let's make, let's make humanity in our own image. And male and female creates them. Now usually we hear that passage and we think of Adam and Eve, we move towards the idea of marriage and the union, uh, the complementarity of man and woman in that context. Today we look at the creation of man and woman in a different context. In the context of Benedict and Scholastica, who showed the complementarity of men and women, but in a different way, through the living out of this vocation of being called to community life, and the, the really the beginnings of what we understand as religious or consecrated life, really taking form and taking shape. And we see, you know, uh, we know St. Benedict wrote the rule of Benedict for his order, for his community, and for the women's community. We see in St. Scholastica a, a, a great desire for communion, communion with God and communion with others, especially those in the community. And it, it, we've probably heard the story of how she wanted to, she and Benedict met one day and they were speaking all day about God and she wanted to continue. And he says, no, the rule says I must return to the house of men, you know, the, the men's uh, house. And so she prayed to God and a storm broke out and Benedict said, Sister, what have you done? And she says, well, I asked you and you didn't listen. And so I asked God and he heard me and answered my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> to want to be the whole night. And they spent the whole night speaking of God and their faith. How many of us can say that we spent that much time with a sibling speaking about those things? But this, this wonderful uh, gift that we have in the presence of St. Scholastica, the desire for this deep communion with God, and with others, and how uh, in the context of this reading of creation, not just the, the care and the attention that God gives to doing the work of creation, but the fact that God designated a day for rest. A sense of giving a sacred rhythm to existence, and that God's own self participates in the rhythm now the Benedictines, we know their motto, which is uh, their charism, ora et labora, prayer and work. And they're not separate or, or just different parts. They are, it's a conversation, it's a dialogue with their way of life. There are times for prayer and there are times for work. They're like two hands, two hands that join in times to praise God, to ask for assistance and pardon and two hands that come together to wash the clothes and plant and to harvest. They're the ways in which that rhythm guides their whole life. So what does it mean for us? It means that God wants that sacred rhythm to be part of our lives. But in this day and age, it's so militated against having a time of rest, time for reflection. Time for sitting with each other and just sharing about our faith and our lives. And so part of our understanding of evangelization is being able to help everyone see the value and just taking time to be with each other and to be with God, to have that day of rest. The Eucharist is meant to be kind of like the, the, the center point of that rhythm, but it guides all the other parts of our lives. We don't spend all of our time in Mass, but that, that Eucharistic liturgy becomes sort of that focal point that helps us to establish the rhythm in the rest of the week, or the rest of the day even. And so, what God is asking of us is, can we attune ourselves to that rhythm? Or do we follow what the world says, we cut pieces of ourselves off from God? 
by saying, oh, this is my prayer time, and then this is my work time. So like, I've got work Chris, and I've got home Chris, and I've got in at the mall Chris, and I've got at the movies Chris, and I've got at Disneyland Chris, and I've got, you know, at, at church Chris. No, that's not how we were made. We weren't made to be like that. We were made to be whole and entire. And that rhythm helps us to live out that existence. And that's the gift that we can share with the world today. Helping them to establish that own sacred rhythm in their own lives. The time for work, a time to just be with God, a time to be with others. And to allow the sacred rhythm of God's creative love to continue to build a new life within us.